This segment, let's discuss the law of definite and multiple proportions. But we've, before we do that, let's um, have a quick review briefly just to remind us of um, why this is important. So we need to remember that matter is anything that occupies um, space and has mass. And also that um, the law of conservation of mass tells us that the mass of the reactants equals the mass of the products because matter is neither created nor destroyed. So that being said, we can jump right into the law of definite proportions, which is also sometimes called the law of definite composition, depending on um, what you're looking at. So what it states is that regardless of the amount, a pure compound always contains the same elements in the same proportions by mass. And so just hearing those words probably doesn't really mean a whole lot. And so we'll do an example, which hopefully will shed a little light on what that means exactly. Um, so again, a reminder is that the law of the conservation of mass is applied to compounds, and the mass of the compound is equal to the sum of the masses of the elements that make up the compound. So remember, a compound is just two elements together. So water is a compound that's composed of hydrogen and oxygen. So if we're going to, let's apply the law of conservation here based on the mass for water and let's kind of work that out. So if we have one water molecule, it's composed of two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. So if we recall from the periodic table, hydrogen weighs about 1.008 grams, oxygen weighs about 16 grams. So if we have two hydrogen atoms, that means the mass is one gram each, so we have a total of two grams of hydrogen. And then we have one oxygen atom, its mass is 16 grams, so we've got 16 grams of oxygen. So that means the molar mass of water is 18 grams. So then the ratio of hydrogen to oxygen is then 1 to 8. So let's move on and talk about the law of multiple proportions, which is a little more difficult maybe, and it's also known as Dalton's law. And so this comes into play a lot when you're doing stoichiometry. So that's when you're balancing equations and trying to figure out molar masses of different um, compounds that are um, involved in a reaction. So this states that when one element combines with another to form more than one compound, the mass ratios of the elements in the compounds are simple whole numbers of each other. Again, the words probably don't mean a whole lot, but let's work through a couple of examples and see if that sheds some light. So here let's look at carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide. So both of these compounds are composed of the same elements. Carbon monoxide is composed of carbon and oxygen. Carbon dioxide is composed of carbon and oxygen. But clearly they have different properties because we know that carbon dioxide is something that's in our air and in our bodies and we breathe it and it's fine. However, carbon monoxide, even in pretty small concentrations, can actually cause you to exist asphyxiate and kill you. So clearly they have different properties. So maybe one of the reasons why that is, is what we're gonna see here. So in carbon monoxide, the oxygen to carbon ratio is one to one. So again, the molar mass of oxygen is 16 grams and the mass of carbon is 12 grams. So then if we look at carbon dioxide, the carbon oxygen to carbon ratio is two to one. And so that means that there are two oxygens for every one carbon, so the mass of oxygen is 32 grams and the mass of carbon is still 12 grams. So you see here that the, the ratios here, it's exactly two times what it was for carbon monoxide. So we can apply the same logic to um, the difference between water and hydrogen peroxide, H2O2. So again, water and um, hydrogen peroxide are both composed of the same elements, so compounds of the same elements, hydrogen and oxygen in water and hydrogen and oxygen in hydrogen peroxide. And so let's look at the hydrogen to oxygen ratio in water is two to one. And in peroxide, it's two to two, or you could say one to one, but for these purposes, it's just a little bit easier to think of it as two to two. So then the mass of um, hydrogen, again, is one gram per hydrogen, and you've got two of them. So the mass here is two grams to 16 grams of oxygen. And then for the peroxide, it's two grams of hydrogen for the same reason. And oxygen is 16 each, so that makes the mass here 32. Again, you see that the ratios, the mass ratios work out that H2O2 is exactly twice that of water. So this is the basics of 
um, proportions and go ahead and work through some more practice problems so that you can get up to speed on that.